Turkish president's decision to open the borders with Europe has prompted thousands of refugees and migrants to head towards Greece. The EU's leaders are heading to Greece on Tuesday to witness a burgeoning political crisis that has kabooshed what should have been a triumphant week for Brussels. Before this weekend, the European Commission had been gearing up for the grand unveiling of its landmark climate law on Wednesday. The carefully crafted choreography included inviting Greta Thunberg into the heart of the Brussels machinery for photo ops and handshakes, before Ursula von der Leyen presented a beefy strategy to make Europe the world's first climate-neutral continent. But Recep Tayyip Erdogan had other plans. The Turkish president's decision to open the borders with Europe over the weekend has prompted thousands of refugees and migrants to head towards Greece in the last 72 hours and gazumped Brussels' good week. Ms. von der Leyen, along with Council President Charles Michel and the Parliament's David Sassoli have ditched their plans with Ms. Thunberg and will head to Greece too for a show of strength with Premier Kyriakos Mitsotakis. As of last night, the frontier was awash with images of Greek security forces firing tear gas at groups including children. The Greek Coast Guard confirmed a child died after a dinghy capsized on the way to Lesbos Island on Monday. NYT in Brussels, the crisis has turned attention to what to do about the strained EU-Turkey migrant deal that has dominated the diplomatic relationship between Europe and Erdogan since 2016. Mark Ruta, Dutch Prime Minister and a driving force behind the initial agreement, vowed never to negotiate with a knife at our throat. Greek authorities accuse Erdogan of blackmail and say their country's borders and Europe as a whole are under attack. But for all the bluster, is there any alternative but to strike another bargain with Erdogan? One senior EU official thinks the Europeans are on better grounds to dictate terms to a Turkish president, who has suffered a series of blows in his offensive in Syria, than in 2016. The humanitarian consequences of a fresh migration crisis, especially for Turkey, are huge. We will do a deal but not at a point where it looks like we are being blackmailed, said the official. Critics have long said the current €6 billion Euros deal, which funds projects to help refugees integrate in Turkey, is unsustainable. Kadi Piri, a Dutch Labour Party MEP, says Brussels is now paying only lip services to the accord. There has been no willingness whatsoever from the EU side to continue the financial agreement beyond the 2016 pledges, she notes. Aid wasn't even included in the Commission's proposal for the EU future budget. Funding for 500,000 Syrian school children ends this September. The cash assistance for 1.7 meters refugees in Turkey runs out of funding by March 2021, says Ms. Piri. Still, advocates of the agreement think it must stutter on in some form. Since the 2015 crisis, European governments across the spectrum have turned rightwards on migration, there are precious few advocates for a generous border policy left in the EU. It is also those most willing to use migration as a political lightning rod, like Hungary's Viktor Orban or Austria's Sebastian Kurz, who need Erdogan to play ball to keep incomers away. Observers note that without détente, the EU's claims to being a «normative» power will be shredded as its governments hit the bounds of international law. Gerald Knaus, chairman of the European Stability Initiative and one of the architects of the 2016 Turkey deal, notes that Greece's decision to suspend asylum applications for a month mimics the nativist fantasies of Mr. Orban and other populists. This a dream of Donald Trump and it is the European Union that is currently practicing it, says Knaus. This could be the year that the EU's support for the UN Convention on Refugees dies. Europe's traditional investment banking giants are taking a battering in the US. The EU is being urged by the European Parliament's centre-right group to revise its rules to foster the development of European corporate champions as the Commission prepares an industrial strategy paper next week, writes Sam Fleming. Manfred Weber, head of the European People's Party, and Esther de Lange, vice chair, have written to two top commissioners saying the competition framework needs to allow sufficient flexibility for EU champions to emerge and flourish. The letter, seen by the FT, is addressed to Commission Executive Vice President Margrethe Vestager and to Thierry Breton, the Internal Market Commissioner. The EP wants Brussels to be ready in exceptional cases to allow mergers that would create pan-European champions similar to the rail group that would have been formed had Vestager not blocked the Siemens Alstom tie-up last year. 
The letter also urges the commissioners to do more to address the imbalances in the economic relationship with China, under which state-backed companies have more access to European markets than vice versa. It says, updating our competition framework should not be taboo, nor an issue we Europeans should shy away from. The EP group strongly believe in fair competition, and that goes hand in hand with a robust framework that still allows sufficient flexibility for EU champions to emerge and flourish.